With more airframes delivered to date than any other current model, the Boeing 737 is one of the most successful commercial aircraft in history. However, its latest generation, the 737 MAX, has somewhat tarnished the impressive history of the 737 family. When the model was grounded in 2019 over safety concerns, it caused difficulties and losses for airlines around the world, as well as for Boeing. It's now flying again, but how did the 737 evolve into what we see flying today? And what does the future hold for the 737 MAX? Boeing developed the 737 during the 1960s as a supplement and eventual replacement for the popular 727. The 737 was designed to directly compete with the Douglas DC-9, BAC-111 and Sud Aviation's Caravelle. One of the most notable innovations Boeing introduced with the 737 airframe was the introduction of a platform with only two engines. Preceding Boeing jets, the 707 and 727, were four- and three-engine aircraft, respectively. Twin-engine aircraft were seen as the economic way forward, and Boeing responded to the market with their new airframe. Unlike its competition, the 737 chose to mount the two engine pods under the wings instead of the rear of the fuselage. This enabled Boeing to offer a wider cabin with six across seating, five was typical with other aircraft, and to accommodate standard width freight containers. Having the engines lower to the ground also made maintenance easier. The first 737 was unveiled in 1967, and it entered service in February 1968 with Lufthansa. The 737-100 was much smaller than we're used to today, offering a typical two-class capacity of just 85, with a maximum exit limit of 124. The 737-200 soon followed, with an increased capacity of 102, with a limit of 136, and higher thrust engines. Boeing has continually modernized the 737, making modifications and new variants to meet the changing needs of airlines, going so far as to develop a convertible passenger to cargo version, the 737-200C. It wasn't until the introduction of the classic series 737-300, upgraded with the more efficient CFM-56 in 1984, that the airframe would see big changes. But by keeping commonalities between older models and focusing on efficiency, Boeing saved on certification, production and development costs, and allowed airlines to more readily mix fleets. Size options were expanded with three different capacity variants. The largest of these, the 737-400, took typical capacity up to 188. Spurred by the rise of fly-by-wire and the A320 in the early 90s, Boeing took yet another leap forward with their next generation, or NG series, of 737s. Launched in 1993, the first of these models would fly by 1997. Again, the new series maintained commonality, but introduced upgraded and more efficient CFM56-7 engines, a redesigned wing, and cabin alongside cockpit improvements. The number of variants increased to 4, and maximum capacity to 200 with the 737-900ER. The second largest variant, the 737-800, has gone on to become the best-selling so far. Simple flying looked previously at how the compromise of range and capacity has made it such a success. The 737 MAX series was announced in 2011, shortly following the announcement from Airbus of the A320neo family of planes. The MAX series was introduced in May 2017, with Indonesian airline Melindo Air the launch customer. Like previous generations, it aimed to incorporate new technology and efficiency improvements whilst maintaining commonality. CFM International Leap 1B engines, with their larger fan diameter, boosted the range and maximum takeoff weight for all variants of this generation. This larger size caused issues with low ground clearance, leading to the lengthening of the nose landing gear and a further forward placement of the power plants. The engine nacelles received chevrons for noise reduction, much like the 787. Another important aerodynamic improvement to this generation is its distinctive split winglets. Winglets work by reducing vortex drag, where different air pressures converge at the wingtips. 
while previous planes like the 737NG featured winglets previously, the MAX's winglets are a new in-house design that Boeing claims improve efficiency as much as 14% over that of the NG. For the time being, however, many people remember the 737 MAX series not for its efficiency, but for its long and damaging grounding. This followed two fatal crashes. In October of 2018, Lion Air Flight 610 crashed in the Java Sea shortly after takeoff from Sukarno Hatta International Airport, Jakarta. All 189 souls on board were lost. In March of 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crashed shortly after takeoff from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, resulting in the loss of all 157 aboard. The FAA grounded the MAX on March 13, 2019. Many other regulators grounded it even earlier. The circumstances of both crashes were similar, and it was suspected that problems with the MCAS were at least partly to blame. Following the NTSB investigation, this was confirmed. The problems that led to the two crashes included erroneous readings from sensors and a lack of training for pilots in how to respond. MCAS was added to overcome the tendency for the MAX to pitch up, caused by the larger engines and their location further forward. It was not present or needed in earlier 737 generations. This was part of the problem, as Boeing obviously wanted to maintain commonality for the new aircraft. The addition of this new system was ultimately wrongly handled. Errors included changes to the MCAS during implementation, including reducing sensor inputs from 2 to 1, and pressure for Boeing to get the aircraft certified for pilots without simulator training. This training issue, both the omissions of MCAS for conversion training and the plans needed for it to go forward, has been a major issue in the investigation and recertification plans. In its conclusions, the NTSB report said that Boeing did not adequately consider and account for the impact that multiple flight deck alerts and indications could have on pilots' responses to the hazard. The specific failure modes that could lead to unintended MCAS activation were not simulated as part of these functional hazard assessment validation tests. CNN refers to the MAX grounding as the most expensive corporate blunder ever. While we're not going to compare it against others, it was certainly extremely damaging for airlines and Boeing. Airlines sued Boeing for losses incurred, and there have been extensive costs for repairs to the aircraft. Boeing estimates it has incurred a direct cost of $20 billion due to the MAX grounding. This includes $8.6 billion paid to airlines in compensation. This does not include compensation and legal liability for the crash victims' families. Added to this are loss of sales and reputational damage to Boeing. With the aircraft grounded, customers waiting for the 737 MAX did not have to pay cancellation fees for retracted orders, and several airlines have taken advantage of this during the pandemic slowdown. In August 2020, the FAA issued guidance to repair the aircraft faults and improve pilot training. The 737 MAX series was cleared to resume service, subject to changes in training, in November 2020. The Canadian and European regulators cleared it in January 2021. Flights resumed in December 2020, with American Airlines making a demonstration trip. United Airlines resumed services in February 2021. Southwest Airlines, the type's largest customer, followed in March. Many other airlines are resuming the type more slowly. With the ongoing slowdown, there's no rush to supplement aircraft already flying. The grounding and the slowdown in aviation have taken their toll on orders. Before this, the MAX was proving popular. In January 2019, Boeing had recorded just over 5,000 orders for the MAX. Many orders have since been lost, despite Boeing's attempts to sell some of these white tails to other airlines. Simple Flying took a look at the largest customers in March 2021 following this shake-up. Southwest Airlines remained up front with 380 firm orders, 200 737 MAX 7s and 180 MAX 8s. 
This includes an additional order for 100 aircraft placed in March. Lion Air and Fly Dubai are tied following this with 251 orders. And Ryan Air has 210 MAX 200 aircraft on order, including an order for 75 placed in December 2020. United Airlines' recent bumper order for 200 more MAX aircraft has further boosted confidence in the type. As of early July 2021, Boeing has 4,063 unfilled 737 MAX orders and in total 519 aircraft have been delivered. The problems may not be over for 737 MAX though. In April 2021, Boeing recommended 16 MAX operators look at a potential electrical issue before returning aircraft to service, effectively grounding 106 aircraft. Around the same time, the US Transportation Department's Office of Inspector General said it would again audit the FAA after the decision to unground the type. In 2019, Boeing lost 93 orders. In 2020, 641 were lost. More have been lost when changes to accounting standards are taken into account. 2021 has been mixed, with some orders lost, but also new orders picking up. Deliveries were halted during the grounding, but have now resumed. The 737 has had a long history, and while commonality has been the key to this success, it has also been a major contributor to the MAX's issues and grounding. There's a lot more to the 737 MAX's story now that the bird is flying again. What do you think the future holds for this family of aircraft? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this.